Hi, this is Mrs. Pierce Dent from Mummersbury Science, and today we've got another chemistry required practical for you. Now, this one is only required if you are doing the separate GCSEs. So, this is called identifying ions, and we're going to look at various methods today on how we can identify both metal and non metal ions in solution. I'm going to start with metal ions, and I'm going to use the method of flame tests to identify which metal gives which colour in a flame. The metals we're going to look at are potassium, lithium, calcium, copper and sodium. And I'm going to do this flame test in two ways. First of all, I'm going to show you how to use a piece of nichrome wire to put the metal into the flame. And then I've also got some spray bottles, which you probably won't do in the lab because it can make a bit of a mess, but it does give you a really good flame colour. So, to start with, using the nichrome wire, this is just a thin piece of metal bent into a loop at the end. You may have seen me use this on a previous video when we were testing the purity of water and we were testing for the presence of sodium ions. It's exactly the same method here. And I'm going to start with a solution containing potassium ions. Now, all of these are chlorides. So the chloride ion is constant in all of the solutions and won't affect the colour of the flame. It's just going to be the metal. I'm starting with potassium because this can be the hardest colour to see and so I want to do it while the flame is still nice and clean and so is my wire. So I take my potassium chloride solution, I open up the air hole on my flame so that it's a roaring blue flame so there's very little colour in the flame itself and then I dip my wire into the solution of potassium chloride, shake off any excess and then just place it at the very edge of the flame. Now this colour is difficult to see. There is a bit of orange there, but it's not that that we're looking for. Look carefully and see if you can see a lilac purple colour. Do you see it? Just in the middle of the flame. I'll just do it one more time. Now you may, in class, have actually looked at this flame through a piece of blue glass. This actually gets rid of the orange colour in the flame and makes the purple easier to see. Let's see if we can see the colour any more clearly if I use the spray. Mm, maybe not that much, but what you're looking for in an answer is that the potassium gives you a lilac flame in the flame test. Now between each metal, I'm going to just heat my loop right in the middle of the flame till it's glowing red hot like that and that will just get rid of any metal ions that are left on the loop before I go to metal number two, which is lithium. Now this is also a group one metal, just like the potassium was, but it does give a very different colour. Watch this. There, do you see that really dark red colour? Usually described as crimson, this is very characteristic of lithium. Again, let's try the spray bottle and see if we can see that colour again. So, lithium. Beautiful dark red, crimson colour. Having cleaned my loop again, I'm going to move on to metal number three, which is calcium. The colours are quite similar. Watch carefully you still get a slight reddish colour, but calcium is described as an orange red flame, whereas lithium is described as crimson red. Make sure you don't get those two muddled in your exam. If we try the spray, we get a much more orangey flame than we did with the lithium. Now onto the instantly recognisable copper chloride because its bright blue colour and solution always gives it away. But it also gives a really good flame colour. So nichrome wire at the ready and into the edge of the flame. I think that one's my favourite. Really clear, beautiful green colour. So let's see how the spray goes for the copper. Again, very distinctly green. And finally, sodium. Now I've deliberately left this one till last because actually the flame colour is so bright and strong in sodium, if you do it first it can actually interfere with the other ones. So with the nichrome wire we see the distinctive bright yellow colour and that's the same colour as you get in sodium street lights. And finally with the spray, 
very obviously yellow. So now that we've seen how we can test for different metal ions in solution using flame tests, we're going to change our attention to the non-metal ions. So now I've got five solutions, all that contain sodium, but different non-metal ions with it. So I've got sodium sulfate, carbonate, chloride, bromide, and iodide. And we're going to look at three simple tests we can do to identify these different ions. So we're going to start by testing with hydrochloric acid. So I've got my five test tubes here, and I'm going to put a little bit of each of the solutions in the five test tubes in this same order. So starting with the sulfate. So I'm going to start by adding some hydrochloric acid to each of these solutions. So let's watch carefully to see what happens. So first of all, hydrochloric acid in sodium sulfate. Not a lot. So now hydrochloric acid in sodium carbonate. Oh, do you see that fizzing? Now that is carbon dioxide gas being produced. So hydrochloric acid can be used as a test for carbonate ions in solution. We could try and collect some of the gas and prove it's carbon dioxide by bubbling it through lime water, but I won't do that today. But will it test the other ones as well? Remember the next one, sodium chloride. Not a lot happening. Sodium bromide. Still really nothing very much happening. And finally, sodium iodide. So the only one that gives us a positive test where we get the fizzing and the carbon dioxide bubbles produced is the carbonate ion. Now we can do the next test straight away. We don't have to change anything because I'm now going to test them all with barium chloride. I've already put the hydrochloric acid in, but now let's see what happens when I add barium chloride. So into sulfate, a white precipitate forms immediately of barium sulfate. Into the carbonate, no change. Into the chloride, no change. Into the bromide, no change. Into the iodide, no change. So where hydrochloric acid on its own can be used as a test for carbonate ions, we saw the fizzing, following hydrochloric acid with barium chloride can be used as a test for sulfate ions and we get the white insoluble precipitate of barium sulfate formed. So I've got five fresh samples now of my sodium salts. And the final test I'm going to do is first of all, adding a few drops of nitric acid to each tube. And now I'm going to add some silver nitrate. We've already had one precipitate formed with the barium chloride and the sulfate. Will it do anything with silver nitrate? No. With the carbonate? A precipitate from the carbonate. The chloride? Another one. The bromide? Yes, another one. And finally, the iodide. So we've got four of our solutions that have produced precipitates. Now the carbonate we know already would fizz with hydrochloric acid, and yes, it gives a precipitate with silver nitrate, but we don't really use that as a test for carbonate. It's these three that we're most interested in. Here, we've got an insoluble precipitate of silver chloride, silver bromide, and silver iodide. And what's really important to notice is the difference in the colors. Silver chloride is described as a white precipitate, silver bromide as a cream precipitate, and silver iodide as a yellow precipitate. Now, if we had an unknown solution, we could now use a combination of flame tests and the tests with hydrochloric acid, barium chloride, nitric acid, and silver nitrate to identify both the metal and the non-metal parts of the compound.